This is a beginner level tutorial and I'll show you a basic AOV setup and workflow using Cinema 4D and Arnold and how to use these individual passes inside of Photoshop. If we take a look at our scene, uh, I have a character here I called Lego Man. I have a ground plane, which is just a plane with a uh, shadow catcher, an Arnold quad light, an Arnold sky with an HDRI, a camera and a background object. I'll put in the show notes, I have a, a tutorial that goes how to set up a scene very similar to this. It goes into a little more detail. So now what I want to do is determine inside of Photoshop, which elements do I want isolated? So in this particular example, I know I want the Lego man um, on his own layer. So I'm going to right mouse click C4D to A tags, and I'm going to add a Arnold object mask. You'll now notice I have a display driver, and if we twirl that open, we have the Lego man here. The next thing that I'm going to want to separate is, let's just say for this tutorial, I want to change the pants color later inside of Photoshop. So I'll twirl this open. We will right mouse click, C4D to A tag again, and add another Arnold object mask. These are going to work the same as object buffer in uh, the standard or physical render. Now what I want to do is go ahead and look at my render settings. So the first thing you want to do is look at your output. Normally what I would do is I would match these numbers to the actual file that I want to composite into. So this background is 6,000 by 4,000. So here I would type 6,000 by 4,000 so that these all match up. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080. So now let's go, uh, if you do not already have it selected, go ahead and choose your Arnold renderer and then come to Arnold renderer. Come over to AOVs, and you'll notice we have Lego Man, Pants, and Beauty. These are both custom that we went ahead and set up. Normally, you would find these uh, down here under the custom section, but since I have no other custom set up, there is no custom. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to probably want to tweak shadows. So I want as much flexibility as possible, so I'm going to shift click all three here and drag to the right. And we'll clear that. And the next thing that I want to add is direct and indirect. So another way of adding the inactive to the active is just you can drag, as I did before, or double click, and it'll jump over to the active. These here are all the other options you have, but since this is a basic tutorial, I'm just gonna do a very basic setup. Next, I'm gonna go to my save. We'll click this, and here we want multi-pass image setup. This is where you will save the file to, which directory I'm just saving to the desktop. Under format, I'm compositing into Photoshop, so I've chosen a PSD, and I'm gonna do a 16-bit, and make sure that multi-layer file is selected. Now go ahead and close your render settings. If you want to make sure before you press render that these are all set up correctly, we can run the IPR and under display, if you scroll down, we'll choose Lego Man and we see he's on his own layer. We'll look at the pants. He's also on his own layer. So now we'll go ahead and click render now that we know it's all set up correctly. So now we're in Photoshop and you can see we have all our passes on their own layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and bring my background layer in. You shift click and drag this in and release. And since I didn't do it the same size, I'm gonna to need to scale this. So I'm gonna hit Command T, Command Zero, and Option Shift Click to scale. Next, I'm gonna take my background and drag that to the bottom of my layer stack. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and disable the visibility on all of these layers. So I'm just looking at my character. If you look at both of these, they come in as a linear dodge in an add blend mode. And if you notice the highlights are a little blown out here, I don't like that. So I'm gonna change my direct, which is the brighter layer to a, we'll go light and blend mode. So now what I wanna do is make a merged copy of these two layers. I'm gonna keep these just in case I wanna come back to it. So I'm gonna shift click to select them both and then do command option shift E 
and that makes a merged copy of those two layers. And I'm going to call this merged copy. And I'm going to turn the visibility of those two layers off. Now what I want to do is isolate this so the background comes through. So what I'm going to do is I'm temporarily I'm going to disable the visibility. And if we go to this here Lego Man layer, you can see we have the character isolated. So what I'm going to do now is hit Command A, Command C to copy, disable the visibility, come back to my merged copy, and I'm going to come down here and add a layer mask. And if you option click on your layer mask, it will reveal just your layer mask. And since I've went ahead and copied Lego Man, I'm going to go ahead and paste this into the mask. So hit Command V and hit Command D to deselect and then click our character. And now you'll see our character is isolated by himself. And if I turn back the background layer, you see the character on the background. But now we don't have the shadows. So the next thing I'm going to do, temporarily I'm gonna disable the visibility here, and I'm gonna to come to my shadow layer. And what I'm gonna do here is, again, I'm gonna change the blend mode from a linear dodge to something like darken. And we're gonna do similar to what we just did uh, with the Lego man. Uh, I wanna isolate just those shadows because I wanna work with the, the, the background, which is the raw background, it's a better quality file. I only want the shadows and the characters, just those elements from Cinema 4D. So for me, you have, we drug in all these elements. So this is the actual shadow. And these are essentially, if we isolate those, two different mask options to choose from. The shadow mask, I'm not actually crazy about that mask. It's There's all these other elements and I could clean that up, but I'm gonna use the shadow difference. So again, I'm gonna select this, hit Command A, Command C to copy, come back to shadow, add a mask, and just like we did on Lego Man, I'm gonna do an option, click, and Command V to paste. Command D, and now we have just the shadow isolated. We turn on the background, now you have the shadow, the background, and we turn on the character. And now we have that. Sometimes during this process, you might get a little bit of a fringe. If that's the case, you command click your mask, you can go to select, modify, and then you can expand, contract, feather, smooth, and modify that mask and then refill it if needed. I think that this mask looks pretty good, so I'm not going to mess with it for this tutorial. Next, what I want to do is, let's say I want to isolate, I want to tweak the pants. So we have, if we disable these, we have the pants just isolated here. So again, while I have that isolated, I'm going to hit Command A, Command C to copy that. Turn these other layers back on, and I'm gonna add a U saturation. And again, option click the mask, hit Command V to paste, and now I have just the pants, and I'll only be affecting that in the U saturation. And you can see I can begin to desaturate, lower the brightness, or whatever you want to do. So this is a basic workflow of how you go from Cinema 4D using Arnold into Photoshop.